I know there's a lot of ways that you can do artist talks, a lot of things you can talk about. And so what I decided was that I was going to talk about two things. One, how, maybe why, when I became an artist. And then also, obviously, talk about my show, what inspired me and what I was thinking when I was working on my show. So how did I become an artist? For me, I always felt like I was always an artist. It's like it's always there. I don't even remember when I wasn't. Um, even when I wasn't making art, when I was taking time off, raising kids, shopping kids everywhere, and going through a divorce, and working, school, all of that, I didn't make hardly any art during that time. But still, in the back of my head, <laughs> I was still an artist. Even when I made crappy art, I still felt like I was an artist. I don't know, it just was there. So um, maybe maybe that comes from when you're a kid, get your first coloring book, your first box of crayons that are all yours and start coloring and finding out that that's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> Didn't take me long to realize that I could draw my own pictures and color them. That was even more fun. So maybe it was when I was in second grade and I had an opportunity to be in a school-wide show. They selected one child from each grade to put a piece of art in. Now, I got selected. I was painfully shy, so I didn't like all that attention, but I did kind of secretly like being selected. So. That was probably my first sign that I was an artist, right? And then, but when you're in second grade, everybody thinks they're an artist, so maybe that's not right. So then maybe it's when I got my first set of art oil paints because as a junior high mind, I felt like if you were an artist, a real artist, you worked with oils. So therefore, if I had oil paints, I must be a real artist. <laughs> um, but maybe it was when I got juried into my first show, my first art show, a community show at the bank. And I would not have done it on my own, but my art teacher really was very supportive and pushed me to submit a piece and I got juried into the show. That was pretty nice. But I think what really made me decide I was an artist was the first time I sold a piece of art to somebody that wasn't a friend, that wasn't a family member, that wasn't a neighbor. It was a complete stranger who looked at my art and decided they wanted to take that home with them and paid me money for it. I was 14. I was very ecstatic with a $50 um, sale because that was a lot of money back then. It's a long time ago. Um, but it just made me feel like, um, somebody wanted what I was making. So that was probably when I decided for sure I was an artist. Um, when I discovered the paintings of Van Gogh, that's when I decided how I was going to be an artist, that his paint strokes, the brush strokes, the layers of color, the intensity of emotion that was in his work. That's what I decided I wanted. I wanted to create stuff that had that emotional connection that was important to me. And so that's kind of how I started approaching my art, creating that emotion. It doesn't always work, <laughs> but that's my intention when I, when I go into it. I make a lot of art. I do, uh, I work in a lot of medium. I don't like to single out one area where I'm only working. So I work in a lot of different media and have fun with it. This particular show is ink and resin. And I chose this for the Splash of Color show because I thought that it, it helped convey that sense of emotion that it intensifies, the resin intensifies the colors, it intensifies the, the, the layers and the depth of the pieces so that I felt like they would 
bring that connection to you a little easier. That resin really makes the colors pop, it makes the layers pop, and that makes me happy. So this splash of color is about using color as a connection for connecting to the viewer, connecting me to the viewer, and that we all respond to color. We hopefully respond in a positive way to this show, but sometimes we have negative responses to color as well as positive, and that the color itself can um, bring that intensity of emotion into play. And I feel like having that intensity of emotion helps us, especially when they're positive emotions, it helps us deal with the world at large, right? The craziness that we got going on out there right now, and just that, just the way there's so much anger, so much despair, so much problems in the world, bringing a little splash of color into the mix is a good thing. Um, so for me, I work best with when I am happy, when I am feeling good, when I'm feeling loved, when I'm feeling gratitude, when I'm feeling hope joy. That's when I work well. I'm not good with all that angst and, and artist drama, which is fine for some people and it works great for a lot of people. But for me, I have to have that good feeling. Like I want to feel good when I make an art. And then hopefully when I am feeling that happiness, it goes into the piece, into the art so that when you as a viewer look at it or maybe take it home with you, hopefully, <laughs> that you will see that happiness, that you'll see that joy, that gratitude every time you look at it. And if you look at it and it makes you smile, then that means I've done my job. I brought some joy into your life. Um, I'm not really naive enough to think that me making happy art for you is going to solve all the world's problems, but I do think it will bring a little bit of joy to our own little tiny part of the world that we can have a little bit of happiness in our community, in our homes, in our workplaces, because we respond to the emotions that go into the art. Um, I, I think color imparts a lot of emotion. I think that it, we look at things and we feel things, we have memories of things that we, that we respond to. So you might, you might look at this pink piece and say, oh, I just love pink, it's my favorite color. It makes me happy. And so therefore, this is a good piece for me. It could be something simple like that. It could be a little more deep, like maybe in the yellow that you see daffodils and sunflowers and sunshine and lazy, summer afternoons and that brings that whole emotional response into play about how it makes you feel and what response it brings maybe maybe you like the red piece because your mother always wore red it was her favorite color and it reminds you of her every time you look at it so everything that i do i i, I want to create that response i want to create that connection between me and you, but most importantly between the art and you, and that you, as a viewer, can find something that makes you happy, that makes you laugh, makes you smile when you look at it, and then that helps us bring that happiness into our world. It makes us have a better world. So I believe in that ripple effect. I can have a little tiny bit of goodness and I can spread it to you and you can spread it to the people you know and it, it goes out into the world. Art does heal. Maybe it doesn't heal all at once, but it does heal. It does help us. It brings that, that I don't know, sense of connection to the greater world, to all of us. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't have a lot of deep things. I just really want to have this connection with the viewer and have the art connect with you. And that's 
that's my main purpose. And if I can find that connection, if you can find that connection, then I've done my job. That's really what it's all about. So.